All right, so I took this next slide from the um, presentation that was already recorded and on Canvas. Um, it's a little bit of a non sequitur throwing it in here. If we take a salt, and MX is standing for the salt, where M is the cation and X is the anion, um, here's, here's the trick. When this salt undergoes this one-way reaction so that it's 100% cations and anions, that cation and that anion is completely surrounded by water. And so it has the opportunity to react with water. Now remember that that anion came from the acid that produced the salt and the cation came from the base that produced the salt in that acid-base neutralization reaction. So remember that. Um, so if either one of these ions reacts with water itself, a molecule of water, um, a pH change will occur. And depending on the nature of the cation and the anion, when they react with water, the solution can become either acidic, basic, or remain neutral. So we can have an acidic salt, a basic salt, or a neutral salt. Before we get into the nitty gritty of predicting for an individual salt, whether it will be acidic, neutral, or basic, we first have to figure out which of those ions in the salt have the potential to react with water. So here's the deal. Ions that come from a weak acid or a weak base don't want to stay ions. Weak electrolytes prefer to be in the molecular form, not the ionized form. So these ions will opt to react with water to go back to being in their molecular form. But if an ion came from a strong acid or a strong base, it is perfectly happy being ionized because strong acids and strong bases are 100% ionized. And so those ions are perfectly stable, perfectly happy being ionized. So what we really have to do is look at the base that gave us the cation and look at the acid that gave us the anion and see whether they are strong or weak, and then that will tell us what sort of reaction is going on. Okay, so here's how we're gonna make that pH range prediction. We have to look at where the salt came from. If it came from a strong acid reacting with a strong base, right? So remember the base will give us the cation, and the uh, acid will give us the anion. So if we reverse engineer them and we come up with strong acid and strong base, it will be a neutral salt. They cancel each other out, it's just neutral. But let's say that we had a strong acid reacting with a weak base. That's the upper right corner of this table. So we have a, if we had a strong acid react with a weak base, we're gonna end up with that protonated weak base and it doesn't wanna be protonated. Now that's what I'm showing here is the BH plus. This weak base hates having that H plus ion attached to it and wants to get rid of it. Well, it can transfer that proton to a water molecule. And once it does, it goes back to being that original weak base and it gives us an H3O plus molecule or ion. In fact, this is a little deceiving. I'm gonna rewrite that H3O plus up here all on the same line. All I'm doing is moving, moving that over. So that protonated weak base wants to get rid of that proton. It gives it to a molecule of water. It goes back to being the base, but it's releasing hydronium ions or H plus ions associated with water. The presence of these H3O plus ions makes this salt an acidic salt. If you were to stick pH paper in there, it's gonna, it's gonna read in the acidic range. All right, let's take a look at another example. Let's look at a weak acid reacting with a strong base. That's the lower left corner of this table. That's gonna give us a basic salt because that weak 
acid, once it has reacted with the base, forms this A minus ion, which is that, that conjugate base is so weak, it doesn't want to be in that form. It wants to go back to being the acid in the associated form. So it steals a proton from a water molecule to give us HA plus OH minus. I'm just going to move that up so that it's all on one line. The presence of that hydroxide ion makes this salt basic. So if you take that salt, you dissolve it up in water, the salt's going to react with the water. It's going to produce hydroxide ions. And if you test it with a pH meter, pH paper, litmus paper, it's going to test basic because of those hydroxide ions. In the case that a weak acid reacts with a weak base, and that's where your salt came from, it all depends on which one is weaker as to how the pH of the salt goes. It could go either way, and we're going to skip that level of complication. So we're not going to we're not going to do that one. Um, so a student a long time ago pointed this out. If you have a strong acid reacting with a weak base, it's an acidic salt. So if if it's strong acid then it's an acidic salt. So the one that's strong tells you the pH range, right? So on this first row of the table, the strong acid wins out, and so we end up with an acidic salt. On the second row of the table, it's the strong base that wins out and gives us a basic salt. So when I'm referring to like the second, uh, the first and second row of the table here, I'm talking about the uh, the, the guts here, the contents, not the, the labels. Um, in the, the blue background, I'm talking about all the part with the gray background. Okay, so the, the basic salts from a strong base reacting with a weak acid, that gives us a basic salt. So when you're comparing the acid and the base, if one is strong and one is weak, the salt will have the pH of the thing that was strong. So strong acid, weak base, we get a, an acidic solution. Weak acid, strong base, we get a basic solution. It goes with it whichever one is basic. But that's a, while that is a good way to remember what the pH range will be, the chemistry is actually coming from the weak one, right? The weak base doesn't want to stay protonated, so it gives away its proton. The weak acid doesn't want to stay ionized. It wants to get that proton back, and so it's always the weak one that reacts with water to create the pH of the solution. So let's figure out how each of these salts is going to react with water and what will be the resulting uh, pH of the solution. So if we take sodium fluoride and we dissolve that up in water, well, let's take a look at where these the anion and the cation came from. The cation sodium came from sodium hydroxide, which is strong. It's not going to do anything. The fluoride came from HF, hydrofluoric acid, which is weak. So the fluoride is the thing that's going to react. So that fluoride ion doesn't want to be fluoride. It wants to be HF. So it's going to react with a molecule of water and steal a proton and give us HF plus OH minus. And the presence of this hydroxide will make this a basic solution. It is a basic salt. Another way of thinking about this is because sodium hydroxide is strong and HF is weak, the one that's strong tells us what the pH is, so it is basic. Now, um, ammonium nitrate reacting with water, well, the ammonium ion came from the um, weak base ammonia. And so ammonium doesn't want to stay ammonium. It wants to get rid of that proton. But let's check out what's going on with the anion. The anion nitrate came from the strong acid HNO3. So nitrate is perfectly happy being nitrate. It's not going to do any more reactions. OK, since ammonium ion came from the weak base ammonia, that ammonium ion is going to give away its proton. So it will react with a molecule of water 
and that's going to give us ammonia, which is what ammonium ion would rather be, and a hydronium ion. And so the presence of that hydronium ion makes this solution acidic. But we also could have predicted that just because nitric acid is a strong acid. And so when one's strong and one's weak, um, the one that's strong is going to determine the pH. Since HNO3 is an acid, this is an acidic salt. Okay, last one here, sodium nitrate. Okay, the nitrate ion came from the strong acid HNO3. And sodium ion came from the strong base, NaOH. And since they are both strong, this is going to be a neutral salt. There will be no reaction with water. And if uh, this is the one case where I would expect you to know the actual number for the pH, if it's neutral, the pH is 7.